Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to define some very important terms in statistics and probability. These terms are intersection, union, and complement. Now, they're all part of a set of things that we call Venn diagrams. Venn diagrams are used to illustrate graphically what sets and what sample spaces are and what intersections are and unions and so forth. And so, therefore, it makes it easier to comprehend and easier to see what we mean by that. So let's say we have the sample space, numbers, integer numbers from 1 through 10. Then we have four sets. There would be subsets of the sample space. We have set A, which are the odd numbers, set B, which are the even numbers, set C, which are the first five numbers, and set D, which is number 4 and 8. So they're all subsets of the sample space. Now, what is the intersection between set A and set C. Well, notice an intersection means that only those elements that are common to both subsets. Now, what are common to A and C? Well, A has all the odd numbers, and C has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it has 1, 3, and 5 are the three odd numbers. So the three numbers that are common to both subsets are 1, 3, and 5. So that's called the intersection, the numbers that are common to both. The union are all the numbers that are either belong to A and or C. So in this case we have two subsets A and C. Notice that it's all the numbers that belong to A and all the numbers that belong to C and the numbers that belong to, to the both at the same time. It doesn't matter. It's a complete set of all the numbers belonging to A and R C. So therefore all the numbers belonging to A are 1, 3, 5, and 7, and 9. C is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we know that 1, 3, and 5 are common but 2 and 4 belong to C, 7 and 9 belong to A, we include all the numbers, so therefore all the numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7 and 9. Also notice that we also keep putting this symbol right here, this is the sample space that includes all the possible outcomes. Now this could be everything, not just the sample space, but the entire universe as we call it, we can simply call it, this is any possible outcome from any event or any outcome for any experiment, anything that we can do, or we can simply define it as what belongs in this total box is the entire sample space and then everything else are simply subsets of the sample space. So there's different ways of actually representing that. But in this case I just kept on writing, oh I didn't do that over here, this is simply what's, whatever's in the box includes the entire sample space, all the numbers from 1 through 10. Okay, now we have what we call the complement. The complement of a set or a subset is simply all the numbers that do not belong to that set. Since A has all the numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9, so the ones that are left over that are part of the sample space that are not in A is therefore called the complement of A. So all the elements that are not in A. So in this case it would be 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. Now there's three more things we should define. One is what we call disjoint sets or subsets. Here we have two sets, A and D, and notice that A and D have nothing in common. A, there's only five odd numbers. D are two even numbers. There's nothing in common, so these are what we call disjoint sets. A and D are disjoint sets, so they'll have any elements in common. In some cases, all the elements of one also belong to another one. For example, B has, as a, set, as a subset has all the even numbers, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. D has two even numbers, 4 and 8, so all of the numbers in D also belong to B, so therefore D is a subset to B. And one more term is called the difference. Sometimes we want to know what is, um, what is in B but not in D. Since all of the members or all the elements in D also belong to B, if we subtract all the elements for D from D, all the elements that we find in D, if we subtract those from B, what is left over is called B minus D, or the difference of B and D. So B minus D means all the elements in B minus the ones that also belong to D. The leftover is 2, 6, and 10. So those are some very important terms to know in probability and statistics. If you understand these, then you're a long ways in going in understanding the terminology of prob probability and statistics. So, Memorize, memorize those, I should not just remember them, but memorize those, stick them in your head, make sure you remember what these mean, and that makes the following videos and everything in prob probability and statistics easier to understand. And that's how we do that.